Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 13th July 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote is a motivational quote, especially to boost your preparation. The quote here is tough time never last. Tough times never last, but tough people do. So here, yes, casually and obviously in your UPSC preparation. So this is a very, very long journey. So for some people, it, they will be going to clear in first attempt, but it is the most rarest thing and many people they will be taking twice, thrice or four times or five times and even there are many students they can clear in the last attempt as well right so in this long journey you need to be motivated and tough times will be will be there but they never last and but the tough people they do with you okay so please try to stay away from this tough people and try to make uh, and try to make that positive people they will be surrounding you and they will be boosting you okay they will be providing you some confidence support etc and now let's try to see first topic it is regarding india's population so recently united nation report which mainly talked about population of india which is going to surpass china okay so this is a very very important article and even as you all know population increase or population rise is one of the important problem that we are facing right so we are going to talk about this topic it's a very important from your gs paper too so now let us try to see context if you see context it mainly says that so recently united nations world population prospects which had been released okay so recently united nations world population prospects had been released so when it had been released on world's population day that is on 11th july on 11th july this world population prospect had been released and this report which mainly says that india going to cross china soon by 2023 by 2023 india it is going to cross or surpass china by 2023 so this is one important key highlight and you have to remember that so if you are focusing on some highlights of this report it mainly says that china and india they are the most populous countries so first populous countries as of now is china and second one is india yes you all might knowing this fact and many of students they might not know about exact population of india exact population of china right so here yeah, China and India most populous country they are the most populous countries in the world and according to this world prospect of uh, 2019 so here yeah, China with 1.44 billion population and India with 1.39 billion population so that means so roughly China which mainly contributes 19 percentage of world's total population and India contributes 18 percentage of world's total population then you can understand if you draw the diagram pi diagram so you can show here 19 percentage of population which is mainly contributing by China and 18 percentage of population which mainly contributed by India and you can write other other two or three most populous countries in the world and you can draw this diagram so if you are presenting like this then it will be very very attractive and even you can get half or one mark more compared to that of other students so dragging of at least half or one mark in every question is very very important and we are we need to focus on the presentation there okay so first important point in this prospects here is india and china they are the most populous countries china contributes 19 percentage of world's total population and india contributes for 18 percentage of world's total contribution and here one more important point in this prospect here is india is going to take over china so by around 2023 india's population will overtake china's population and india become the one of the first and the most populous country in the world and next one here is the population to reach 8 billion so united nation forecast which mainly stated that your world's population which is mainly going to expect to reach 8 billion so this is also one important point and this point may be a potential prelim statement as well and next one here is so this 
prospect which also making a note on birth rate as well so there is a net drop in birth rates so while there is a net drop in birth rates it observed in several developing countries more than half of rise of forecast in the world's population in the coming decades will be concentrated in eight countries so in eight countries we can see there is a net drop of birth rates so which are those eight countries you have to know so those eight countries are the first one is drc that is democratic republic of congo in africa next one is egypt ethiopia india nigeria pakistan philippines and tanzania so if you're talking about india so as you all know recently we can we already said about this national family health survey report of 5 so in this report which mainly said that tf4 of india it is just 2.1 okay so there is a decreasing of tfr which is mainly seen so tfr is nothing but total fertility rate that means women in the reproductive age okay so women in the reproductive age so how many births she is going to give that is called as tfr so next one here is so this prospect which also making a note on sustainable development goals as well so there is a one important challenge to this sustainable development goal so actually recently we studied about a sustainable development goals report as well so we studied that because of climate change because of this covid 19 and because of some important reasons okay economic uh, economic slowdown of all the countries we are mainly there is a geo party that is mainly seen in achieving of this sustainable development goals so that topic we discussed very recently so if you're following our current affairs daily then you can know about what is happening okay there will be some sequence you are not going to miss any topic right so here challenge to the sustainable development goals so it mainly said that whenever there is increasing of population which is happening so we are going to see there is a doubling of population between this 2022 and 2050 so here because of increasing of population especially i can say here doubling of population so because of this doubling of population so that will keep some additional pressure on resources so because of this it will mainly fail it mainly leads to some challenges of achieving of our sustainable development goals there are 17 sustainable development goals and if you're talking about the population so especially older age population older age population growth which is mainly increasing in the numbers and as well as in the total share of population as well so whenever there is increasing of this old age population what is the cause of concern so these people they will not contribute to our economy and these people mainly are dependents dependents on their children right so because of this mainly to support this old age people your government need to provide some health insurance government need to provide some pensions so let me know in the comment box so which are the schemes in india which are mainly dealt with this elderly or old age people so what are the steps taken by the government for the for the ensuring of safety of this uh, old age people let me know in the comment box you don't forget about this and next one here is sustained develop or uh, drop of uh, fertility so we, here this prospect which mainly says that there is drop in the fertility so because of this uh, sustained drop okay that is continuous drop in the fertility which mainly led to increased concentration of population in the working ages that means there is decreasing of population okay but between this 0 to 14 years but here we can see there is increasing of population between this 25 to 64 years so because of this what happened whenever there is increasing of working age people they mainly contribute to our economy that means so that will lead to accelerated or increasing of economic activity in the country that will finally contribute to economic growth per capita as well and next one here is migration so international migration that means from one country to another country whenever there is migration which is mainly happening so this migration which is also playing an important impact on the population trends in some countries and next one is covid 19 so due to this COVID-19 pandemic, it had a significant impact on many things like population change, including mortality, fertility and migration. So here global life expectancy which mainly fall by 1.8 years that is between 2019 to 2021. 
so here we can see there is excessive mortality due to this covid 19 so especially people who are suffering with comorbidities like lung disease asthma liver disease kidney disease hypertension like that so those people they had increased risk of mortality due to this covid 19 so here now let us try to understand one important aspect that is so what will be the impact or what is the significance for india mainly we are going to overtake this china so what is the important things so if we're talking about the what is significance so first here is we are having concern about overcrowding okay so actually here in the world okay if you're talking about world's population world's population india is mainly contributing for 18th percentage of world's population right so here whenever there is increasing of further population in india yes we can face a challenge like overcrowding so overcrowding it is a one of the uh, most important concern that we can face because of rapid increasing of population and next one here is here experts says that so in the world if you're talking about this world population it is also going to reach 8 billion okay so here this is also one cause of concern so whenever there is increasing of population or overcrowding is happening yes the real concern it is about quality of life of people and next one here is increase in need of skilling in india so especially if you're talking about india's data experts feel that 0 to 14 years and 15 to 24 years they will continue to decline so because of this here we need to go for reskilling of the people and there is also some challenges which are mainly associated with increasing of number of old people as well okay because that will increase the expenditure of government because government need to provide some pensions health insurance etc for these peoples because these elderly people they are mainly having some challenges regarding their health and they will not going to contribute to the economy and the retirement will be happening so from the government they need to get some lump sum amount of money so because of all these things so we are going to face some challenges with increasing the number of old age population and this is about this topic and let me know your opinion on this topic so what will be the impact that we can see whenever there is in there is increasing of population in india and how can we deal with those challenges so this is your second questions and now let us try to see the next topic it is regarding union home and cooperation minister unveiled the statue of peace of swami ramanjacharya in srinagar okay it is about statue of peace it is about statue of peace so actually there is one question which ha which occurred in recent 2022 prelims of upsc regarding this ramanujacharya that is statue of peace so this topic is very important from your prelims point of view so now let us try to see the context if you see context it mainly says that recently in srinagar union home minister he unveiled uh, Swami Ramanuja's Statue of Peace. Okay, so here our Union Home Minister he unveiled Swami Ramanuja Charya's Statue of Peace, and I want to show you that statue. Then that will be that will be helpful for your pictographic memory. So this is that statue. Okay, and if you are talking about some facts regarding this Ramanuja Charya, so facts are very very important. So nowadays the facts based questions are asked in your UPSC. So follow the trends. So Ramanuja Charya was born in 2017. He took birth in Sri Perumbudur in Tamil Nadu. Okay, he is from Tamil Nadu state. And actually he was a revered Vedic philosopher and as a social reformer. And he mainly advocated two important things. So because of this, we can see here, uh, this Swami Ramanuja Charya, he is also relevant today because he mainly advocated equality and injustice. So as you all know that there are number of reports which mainly says that there is rising of inequality in India. So at that time, okay, at that time onwards since 2017 he took the birth. So he mainly advocated equality and as well as social justice. So because of this, this Ramaja Charya, he, he is relevant in the today's times as well. And he brought the treasure of Vedic literature to the doorsteps of common man. So he mainly brought treasure of Vedic literature to the doorsteps of the common man and he advocated one philosophy that is which is Tadvaita. So if you are studying your art and culture especially Nitin Singhania there is one chapter which mainly talks about this philosophy. There you will be coming across Advaita, Dvaita Advaita, Vishishta Advaita. Okay. 
So here you have to refer that and please try to open your Nitin Singhanya and try to refer this chapter. So this will be very very important. And most of the aspirants they mainly confuse here. So even when I used to prepare for this UPSC, I was very much confused with this Advaita, Vishishta Advaita. So what is the difference here? So here you have to refer this topic for sure and you have to be clear because this concept is also important from your ethics under GS paper 4. And next one here is he became the preceptor of this Bhakti movement and also source of all other Bhakti schools of thought. And he was an inspiration for mystic poets like Kabir, Mirabai, Annamacharya, Bhakta Ramdas, Tyagracha and many others. And he initiated the concept of the nature and her resources like water, air, soil, trees, etc. And he mainly focused on even weed to protect from the pollution as well. So because of this, I like this Ramanujacharya and he is very much relevant in the today's context. And if you are talking about why it is called a statue of peace, what is the reason behind this? So installation of this peace statue that will bring the blessings and as well as message of Ramanujacharya to Kashmiris of all religions. And they will take Kashmir further on the path of peace and progress. So as you all know, Kashmir is one of the important uh, area in India. So where we can see continuous conflicts are seen. So here the government which is mainly taking some steps to establish the peace in this region. So it is one of the step in that. Okay, and here this will also further enhance the development of people of Kashmir without any discrimination. And if you are talking about what is the Saint Ramanuja connection with Kashmir. So what is the Saint Ramanuja connection with the Kashmir. So if you are talking about this Ramanuja Chari, he visited this Kashmir in the 11th century. And he mainly got some important manuscript called as Bodhayana Vritti. Okay, it is mainly talking about Brahma Sutras. So this Bodhayana Vritti which had the reputation of being the most authoritative explanation of this Brahma Sutras. So later on his disciple that is Kuresha, you have to remember this Kuresha. So his disciple Kuresha, he accompanied him and committed the entire text into memory as local scholars they did not permit this Ramanujacharya to carry the manuscript out of this Kashmir. And after returning to Sri Rangam, here Ramanujacharya, he dictated Sri Bhashyam. So this Sri Bhashyam it is a commentary on this Brahma Sutras. Okay. And this one here is Ramanujacharya. He again returned to Kashmir after two years and dedicated this Sri Bhashyam to this region again. So this is about this topic. And now let us try to see next topic. It is regarding major economies forum on climate and energy meets. So here we need to focus on what is this major economies forum on climate and energy. So this article is important from your GS paper 3 under environment and ecology and even it is important from your GS paper 2 under international relations. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So if you see context it mainly says that union minister for environment he represent India at the virtual meeting of the major economies forum on energy and climate okay he mainly represent India at a virtual summit okay of major economies forum on energy and climate I said it is mainly hoisted by US president and if you see some de uh, details regarding this forum so actually this major economics forum on energy and climate change which launched in the year 2009 and this meeting which is mainly focusing on strengthening of energy security and to tackle this climate crisis. So it is mainly focusing on climate crisis and as well as energy security. And the meeting it was attended by 23 major economies across the world and the Secretary General of United Nations. Okay. So this meeting which mainly attended by the 23 major economies. So it is an important fact that is 23 major economies across the world they attended. And next one here is across the world and the Secretary General of United Nations they also attended this for this meet and what are the initiatives which were taken by India okay on this climate change as you all know India is very much doing good in achieving of renewable energy target right and even India is, it is also the one of the important leading country which mainly came up with this international solar alliance so in this way here what are the important facts which are mainly highlighted by our Ministry of Environment in this meet 
so he mainly focused that India's initiatives go beyond its borders. So we came up with this International Solar Alliance. We came up with this coalition of for disaster resilience infrastructure. So these are two important points that you have to remember. And even in your sleep also you should not forget about this ISA. That is International Solar Alliance and as well as coalition for disaster resilience infrastructure. So he mainly mentioned that India has already installed 159 gigawatts of non-fossil fuel okay so you know already installed 159 gigawatts of non-fossil fuel based electricity generation capacity that mainly in the last 7.5 years okay in, from this last 7.5 years onwards there is a drastic increase in the solar energy capacity and we came with increasing of about 18 times of our capacity so in this context your minister he also highlighted that India's annual per capita emissions it is just one third of global average okay and he also made that statement like so ministry of environment and forest they mainly came with the launching of a global movement that is life that is lifestyle for environment okay so this was an important step which are mainly taken by government to address this climate change so now let us try to see next topic which is regarding rocket fuel so i'm going to explain you one important and interesting topic that is by using this bacteria so here in the screen on the screen you can see this bacteria that is streptomyces bacteria so from this streptomyces bacteria we are extracting the fuel and this fuel it is an excellent fuel that can be used as a space fuel okay so this topic is very important and this topic will be will be important from your science and technology point of view which mainly comes under your gs paper 3 and now let us try to see this topic in a great detail so if you see this topic here context says that so the fuel name here is pop fame p-o-p-f-a-m-e pop fame this is a fuel which may be developed from bacteria so the name of that bacteria is streptomyces bacteria in the u.s so if you're talking about energy density of this pop fame which is a very much greater when we are comparing with the fossil fuels like diesel petrol and even other rocket fuels as well so because of this it is very very ideal for using of this fuel in the space so it can be used as a space fuel now so if you see details it mainly says that scientists they have named the new new fuel the name here is pop fame so what is this pop fame that is nothing but polycyclopropanated fatty acid methyl ester okay fatty acid methyl ester polycyclopropanated okay polycyclopropanated that is pop fame means fatty acid methyl ester so in 1960s it is not for the first time we developed this uh, rocket fuel so in 1960s soviet union which made it develop a petroleum based rocket fuel and the name here is Sintin. Okay, Sintin, which is mainly used successfully to the different launch, okay, different launching of satellites or launching of rockets in 1970s. But if you see the powerful performance, if you are comparing with the performance of these two oils, so here we can see, so this pop film, which is mainly having a powerful performance and the Sintin manufacturers, they mainly halted due to high cost and as well as unpleasant process involved here okay and if you're talking about this molecular structure of this pop fame which is very much closely resembling this sentence and this pop fame which is mainly said to have higher energy densities than sintin which mainly means even a small quantity of rock uh, of fuel that can pack considerable energy making it an ideal rocket fuel okay so because of this high efficiency high density it made a best and ideal rocket fuel so this is about this topic and now let us try to see the next topic is regarding retail inflation so this topic is important from your gs paper 3 under economy so many a times every month we can see this topic will be in news like wholesale price index cpi and as well as iip so now let us try to understand this topic in a great detail so if you see the context it mainly says that 
India's retail inflation, which mainly inched lower to 7.01 in June. Okay, so India's retail inflation is 7.01 in June, and if you compare with the earlier month, that is in the month of May, it is 7.04 percentage. So here we can see the target of this uh, maintaining of inflation by RBI. Target year is four plus or minus two. That is between two to six percentage. But here it had been seven percentage from the long ago. Okay, so here upper limit of this uh, tolerance limit of this inflation which mainly crossed for last six months. So this is about this context. And if you're talking about details, so why we can see inflation in the market? So especially we need to talk about rural inflation and as well as urban inflation. So rural inflation means inflation that is seen in the rural areas, and in the next one is urban inflation is nothing but in urban areas. So rural inflation which mainly edged up to seven point zero nine percentage from seven point zero eight percentage in May. So while urban consumers they faced a six point nine two percentage of price rise. As per the consumer price index, okay. So as per the consumer price index, which mainly released, it mainly says that urban inflation, which mainly increased from zero point eight percentage to seven point zero nine percentage, and here urban inflation is like six point nine two percentage. So here, what is the important reason for this inflation? That is increasing of food prices. So food price inflation that is mainly seen, and as per this consumer food price index. Which mainly is to seven point seven five from seven point nine percentage, and mainly removed a uh, remain at eight percentage in the urban areas at eight point four percentage. So there is a high amount of this food price inflation that is mainly seen. So there is a higher cost for sellers, vegetables like tomatoes, as well as milk, meat, clothing, footwear, services, etc. Okay. So this is about this topic, and now let us try to see some facts regarding this consumer price index. So this consumer price index, which mainly measures measures the price change at the retail buyer. For example, I am a retailer. I am going to near my nearby shop, and I will be getting some set of pens. Okay, so on this pen, so how much cost? For example, earlier last month the pens used to cost five rupees. Now it is six rupees, right? So in this way here, we are mainly going to measure this inflation at a perspective of retail buyer. So this CPI, which mainly calculates. The differences in the price of commodities and services like food, medical care, education, electronics, etc. And if you're talking about the CPI, which is mainly having some subgroups, including food, beverages, fuel and light, housing, clothing, clothing, bedding, foodwear, etc. And we are having especially four types of the CPI. That is. CPI for industrial workers, CPI for agricultural laborers, CPI for rural laborers, and as well as rural, urban, or combined. So out of this, here CPI for industrial workers, agricultural laborers, and as well as uh, rural laborers. So they are mainly released by Ministry of Labor and Employment. And fourth one, that is a uh, CPI combined, which mainly released by this NSO, which mainly comes under Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. The base year, which mainly considered here, is twelve two thousand twelve. So this is about this topic in detail. And now let us try to see next topic. Title says mediation bill not getting the act together. So here we are going to talk about this mediation bill. So why this mediation bill is in use? So we need to know that, and we need to know some pros and cons, and even we need to know about some provisions. So here we are going to discuss this topic in a detail. So this topic is important from your polity point of view, which mainly comes from the GS paper too. So now let us try to understand this topic in a great detail. So if you see context, why this bill is in use? So Parliamentary Standing Committee on Law and Justice, which has recommended some substantial changes on this mediation bill. Okay. So here Parliamentary Standing Committee. On law and justice, it recommended some changes to this bill. So because of this, this is in news. So if you see some details, first of all, let us try to understand what is this mediation. First of all, so mediation is nothing but it's one of the alternate dispute resolution mechanism. So if I have any dispute with my neighbor, so we will be going and filing the case in police station, and after that, FIR will be FIR will be filed. And after this FIR will be filed, we will be going to court to dis to resolve the dispute. 
सो वॉट हैपन दिस वन ऑफ द ऑल्टरनेट डिस्प्यूट रेजोल्यूशन मेकानिज्म और वी कैन से मीडिएशन इज वन ऑफ द ऑल्टरनेट डिस्प्यूट रेजोल्यूशन मेकानिज्म हियर वी हैव वन मीडिएटर हु विल बी द थर्ड पर्सन ओके सो आई एम आई एंड माई नेबर वी विल गो टू दिस मीडिएटर एंड वी आर ट्राइंग टू रिजोल्व आर डिस्प्यूट ओके सो मीडिएशन इज अ फॉर्म ऑफ ऑल्टरनेट डिस्प्यूट रेजोल्यूशन एंड इट इज अ वे ऑफ रिजोल्विंग द कंफ्लिक्ट वेर टू और मोर पार्टीज दे डिसाइड टू रीच एन अग्रीमेंट विद द सपोर्ट ऑफ थर्ड न्यूट्रल पार्टी ओके सो हियर दिस थर्ड पार्टी और न्यूट्रल पार्टी इज कॉल एस ए मीडिएटर ही मेनली गाइड्स द प्रोसेस सो इफ टॉकिंग अबाउट सम इंपॉर्टेंट प्रोविजन ऑफ दिस बिल सो फर्स्ट एंड द फोर मोस्ट थिंग हियर इज सो दिस बिल डज अवे विद कंफ्यूजन अराइजिंग फ्रॉम यूजिंग बोथ एक्सप्रेशन वॉट इज मीडिएशन वॉट इज कंसिलियेशन ओके सो दिस बिल विच मेनली डिफाइन मीडिएशन इज वाइडली इन अकॉर्डिंग विद इंटरनेशनल प्रैक्टिस so conciliation is it is like which mainly included under the wider definition of mediation so the first thing here is so this will which mainly came with a separate definitions for this mediation as well as conciliation and this bill which also proposes pre litigation mediation okay at the same time it also safeguards the interest of litigants to approach the competent adjudicatory forums or courts or urgent relief okay so this bill which mainly proposes pre litigation mediation as well and the third important one here is so this bill which mainly talks about the successful outcome of mediation so we also came up with this mediation settlement agreement as well so this mediation settlement agreement that has been enforceable by law so this is a very very important point and this one is the mediation process which mainly protects the confidentiality of the mediation process and this one here is uh, the settlement agreement could be registered with the state or district or taluk okay within 90 days that will helps to ensure maintenance of records as well and the next one here is so this bill which also provides the establishment of mediation council of india so these are some important provisions of this bill and now let us try to see advantages yes when you are having this alternate dispute resolution mechanism so we will be having some advantages so please pause the video and let me know in the comment box like so what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages so please take at least 2 minutes of time and please type the answer in the comment box and i will be announcing the name of that students who wrote the correct and good answer in the comment box in the tomorrow's lecture so if you are talking about advantages the first one here is so we are going to decrease the pendency of cases as you all know that we discussed number and number of articles number and number of articles regarding increasing of pendency of cases so here whenever we are promoting or we are strengthening this alternate dispute resolution mechanism yes that will be helpful for quick disposal of cases and that will be mainly decreasing of time and number of visits and even that will uh, that will reduce the burden on the courts as well so this is a first important thing so which are the issues that we can go for resolving in this alter dispute system so first one here is we can go for resolving of civil commercial family related issues and as well as matrimonial regarding affairs and next one here is it will also have some impact on the doing of business so here yes legislation which has potential to have significant positive impact on the country's economy as well for example any other country which is mainly investing in india so if there is any dispute means if you have this alternate dispute resolution mechanism so it will mainly increase the trust and that will also help for the revival of our economy and we can attract more investment from the other countries and next one here it is about interest of all stakeholders so enacting a comprehensive law and allowing for online mediation may see, may serve the interest of all stakeholders as an effective alternate dispute resolution mechanism okay so whenever we are going for enacting a comprehensive law and whenever we are going for allowing for online mediation so that mainly helps to serve the interest of all stakeholders okay and this effective alternate dispute resolution mechanism is very very helpful for the promoting of interest of stakeholders and this one is it will also helps to improve law and order situation as well so here this bill which mainly provides that any dispute which likely to affect the peace harmony and tranquility among the residents 
or families of that so and so area then they can go for settlement through this community mediation okay and in this way here that will also improve the law and order in that so and so area and we saw the one side of the coin and we have to see the second side of the coin now that is concerns so what are the concerns regarding this uh, bill so it mainly has some impacts on the cross border mediation so with this bill which mainly treats international mediation when conducted in india as a domestic mediation so it is one of the cause of concern so especially singapore convention is not applied is not accepting for this and this one here is does not have a single mediator so this mediation council which has three members so first one will be senior judge that is a retired senior judge and this one here is a person with uh, who is having experience with this alternate dispute resolution okay law and even one academic okay so because of this we do not have a single mediator and this one here is it mainly excludes the chief justice of india from making appointments okay so mediation is a form of dispute resolution and in the judiciary's domain so but the bill which has filled the chief justice of india from the picture for making appointments and this one here is disputes they not be mediated so this bill which mainly provides for a long list of disputes which should not be mediated okay and it provides that any settlement of disputes involving them needs the court approval okay they needs the court approval for example some cases like any fraud disputes related to crimes and as well as minor and as well as patents corporate cases etc so they should not be dealt with this mediation so these are some important things that you need to remember regarding this topic and i hope it is very much clear and let me know your opinion whether this bill is clear to you or not and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding child labor so if you read this uh, article then you can see what is a pathetic situation that we are in okay we are in a very very pathetic situation regarding this child labor and this article which mainly moved a lot okay especially for me so if you see this uh, title which mainly says that center has no new data on child labor so this article says that here central government which is not having any new data regarding this child labor so this article is important from your gs paper to under polity and even from society point of view so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so if you see context it mainly says that center does not have any idea on child labor okay center does not have any id any data okay any data on child labor in the country so the reason for this is drying up of budgetary provisions which is mainly meant for this national child labor project so what are the funds that are made allocated to this national child labor project so these funds are drying up so because of this central government said that we do not have proper data regarding this child labor so if you see details it mainly says that your labor ministry which is mainly learned to have learned to have to, to have told this parliament standing committee on labor that since this nclb which is merged with this samagra siksha abhiyan in 2016 So now ministry do not have any records of this child labor. Okay, the whatever the data that we have regarding this child labor, which is mainly belongs to two thousand eleven census. So if you see the data or details, it mainly says that so last year the panel which had pulled up center for the lack of data on this migrant workers, and now they are mainly searching for the proper data for this child labors. So the standing committee, which mainly reached out to fourteen min union ministries and departments, including Home Ministry, Women and Child Development Ministry of several states, and they said that they do not have any data. So where the standing committee should go and ask for the data now? Okay, central government in central government will be having different ministries like child, women and child, and as well as Home Ministry. and in the states also we have different ministry and if no ministry or no department which is mainly having this data means how we can go for policy making policy interventions right so this is one cause of concern so here labor ministry which mainly says that we may have to wait till the next census to make assessment on the number so here this nclp schools for child laborers they work for 3 to 4 years okay they work for 3 to 4 years and they have also more or less stopped functioning due to the scarcity of funds due to the scarcity of funds you are not working now 
so the member said that through whatever the legislation we have that we are having some different legislations or laws like the child labor prohibition and regulation act okay 18, 1986 so here we are having a stringent provisions under this act also there is minutes of child labor which mainly continue to be exist and it has not been checked at all so here we have received some empirical reports by certain ngos they said that there is increasing of the child labor after this pandemic so if we're talking about status of child labor in india yes you have to know the status for sure so what are the data i am keeping in these boxes that will be very important from your plans and means so please make a note of that so child labor refers to the employment of children in any work okay so here because of whenever children they are kept inside the work means they do not have the capability to attend their schools and they might be mentally physically or as a socially mor morally dangerous and as well as harmful for those children and if you're talking about census of india data 2011 reports okay 10.1 million they are working children in the age group between 15 to 14 years okay out of them about 8.1 million they are in rural areas okay mainly engaged in the cultivators that is 76 percentage and agriculture laborers which mainly includes like 32.9 percentage so if you see the census 2011 report says that 10.1 million of children they are mainly working as a child labor and who are between the age of 5 to 14 years of age and if you're talking about what are the negative impacts or what are the side effects which we can see and which we can see in this younger age people they are going for the child labor so they will come in contact with the different uh, uh, different types of the things like minerals etc and they will also get the skin diseases disease of lungs weak eyesight tb etc and these people they are also vulnerable to the sexual exploitation of the workplace and they are not getting proper education that means they are deprived of the education and they grow up unable to avail the development opportunities okay and if you're talking about some constitutional as well as the laws which are present in india mainly deals with this labor child labor so first one is article 23 of our indian constitution article 24 which mainly comes under fundamental rights so article 23 and 2014 uh, okay article 23 and 14 and even 24 which mainly talks about this forced labor which had been prohibited and article 39 which mainly comes with this dpsp director principles of state policy which mainly says that the health and the strength of workers men and women and the tender age of children they are not abused and this one here is we have child labor act protection and regulation of 1986 so this act which mainly prohibits children who are under the age of 14 years to work in hazardous industries and processes and this one is policy interventions such as mg narega 2005 and even right to education act here so under this we are mainly that is government we are main government is mainly providing midday meal scheme as well and india also ratified with international labor organization conventions okay so here under this it mainly said that we are going to eliminate this child labor so these are some important things that you have to remember regarding this topic and now let us try to see today's questions okay so before that let us try to say today's questions and explanation part so first question here is consider the following statements regarding life buddha so first one here is buddha attained enlightenment under people tree at sarnath buddha delivered his first sermon at bodh gaya so actually buddha attained his enlightenment in bodh gaya and he delivered his first sermon in sarnath so these two statements are interchanged so that answer is four neither one nor two and next question is consider the following statements regarding early vedic society so early Vedic society which was the tribal society in which social relations are based on the kinship ties so if you're talking about kinship means nothing but relations okay either through blood relation or through marriage and this one is early way society is a matriarchal but it is a uh, it is not matriarchal it is a patriarchal and this one here is women they were educated and they had access to the assemblies yes first and third streams are correct second one is incorrect so answer is second 
option that is 1 and 3. And these are today's questions. The first one is regarding Harappan culture, second one is regarding B and R, that is a black and red wear culture. So it is regarding the pottery. So try to read the statements and give me the correct option in the comment box. And I want to make a small announcement. We in Rathod Science, we came up with this foundational course for 2023 and 2024. So in this course, we are mainly providing each and every subjects of your GS. And there's a conceptual clarity and each and every topic which is mainly dealt with a conceptual clarity. And this conceptual clarity is very, very important, especially to clear this prelims mains as well. Okay. So this course is very beneficial and the cost here is just 49,000 rupees and the validity here is two years. So please don't miss this opportunity and try to join this course. It is very, very helpful. And if you want to take individual modules like only geography, history, economy, disaster management in Indian society and as well as science and technology, environment and ecology, ethics, you can take the individual courses. So in these courses, I am personally taking geography and ethics. I am the core faculty of geography and ethics in the Stathos IAS. So if you are weak in those subjects, so try to take that courses. And if you have any doubt, so you can call on this number 8074765513. And this is also WhatsApp number. You can also text me on this number in WhatsApp. And now let us try to see today's Hindu PDF. And there are many articles to be discussed. And without wasting any time, let us try to see this PDF. So first topic, it is about retail inflation. I discussed this topic. Right. And here you can see one interesting image here. Okay. That is about a brief history of time. So it is mainly talking about craggy moonlit mountains. It is the edge of nearby ink star forming region. So it is mainly seen in this Carina Nebula. So actually it is a captured in the infrared light by the near infrared camera. So this is one of the beautiful images that I have ever seen. So you have to know about some facts regarding this Carina Nebula. So let me know some facts regarding this Carina Nebula in the comment box. Don't forget about this. And if you move here, you can see this in this article that is ministry takes up transgender pilot case. So actually he is the first uh, transgender uh, who mainly got this pilot. Okay. So earlier also before getting into this pilot job, actually this person who worked in some aviation institutions as a trainer and finally he became a pilot. But what happened here is so recently the decision which is mainly taken here is the license, the commercial pilot license to this candidate. It is not given and because of this this case went to this DGCA that is a Directorate General of Civil Aviation. So here this DGCA said that as a based on this gender like transgender so we are taking into account this transgender and you are not giving this commercial pilot license it is a discriminator you should give this license to this person. So this is the thing which mainly sent which mainly said in this article. So let me know your comments that what can be the steps taken. So whether it is discriminatory or not. So what if you are the director, if you are this DGCA, so what are the steps that you're going to take to ensure the justice to this so-and-so transgender pilot? Okay. So let me know your comments in the comment box. And if you move forward, there is nothing present in this city page. You can directly move on to this states page here. You can see Godavari flood affects 1.5 lakh people. So you have to know some facts regarding this river Godavari where it had been originated. So which are the dams which are present in on over this river Godavari. And you have to see between which states. So this Godavari is mainly flowing. And you have to also know what are the right bank tributaries and as well as left bank tributaries of this river Godavari. So these are some important things that you have to know. And I hope you are going to comment in the comment box regarding the details that I have asked now. And if you move forward in this editorial page, there are articles that are important. That is a new judicial device for complete justice. Okay, so this article is important and you have to go through this. Okay, because of uh, time which is uh, not sufficient for me today, it's already a lengthy video. So I'm not going to take this topic for the discussion. If time permits in the tomorrow's lecture, I will be going to take this topic for sure. And this article is about create more jobs, revamp employment policy. So this article said uh, it is talking about recent government announcement that 10 lakh jobs are going to be uh, going to be generated. So regarding this, we have this topic. You can easily understand that. And next topic is regarding the scale of municipal finances in, is inadequate. 
so actually if you're talking about 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment act so 73rd constitutional amendment act which mainly led to the formation of panchayats and 74th constitutional amendment act which mainly led to the uh, led to the municipalities so here one important problem that we are facing at this uh, panchayats and municipality level is there is no proper finances so this is the article which is mainly talking about you can easily go through that once and if you move forward in this text and context here this article which is mainly talking about the slow wheels of justice so this article which is mainly talking about pendency of cases so more than 4 crore of cases so this data is very important so please make a note of this data i am explaining here so there are more than 4 crore of cases they are pending in the lower courts that is in the district and national well courts in india so out of which about 25 percentage have been pending from over last five years and more than half that is 50 percentage they have been pending in the pending of cases that are mainly seen in the lower courts of up maharashtra bihar west bengal and you're also seeing there is a very much rapid rise of penance of cases in the demand and supply issues and even some states they are mainly filing the number of cases okay filed per capita which mainly bargained in the recent years okay so this high rate of penalty of cases which is mainly seen and you have to see your state wise data so let me know which state you belongs to and how many cases they are pending in your high court and as well as in your district courts so let me know in the comment box so this will be very useful from your interview point of view and if you see here the next topic is about mediation bill i discuss this topic and if you move on to this page number 10 that is news page here you can see police seizes 25 cases of heroin in mundra so always this heroin which is mainly seen that is drug trafficking and there is a high chance of getting this drug trafficking questions in your upcoming mains and if you move forward in this 11th page there is nothing much important in this 12th page you can see the center has no new data on this child labor so this topic i discussed and this one here is sii to launch vaccine to prevent cervical cancer so actually the cervical cancer is normally seen in women and here women mainly suffer with this uh, cervical cancer the most and women mainly see the cancer which is mainly caused because of this uh, in the cervix part and as well as in the breast so breast cancer and the cervical cancer are the most common cancer that we can see in the women so here in the cervix which will which we can see one important virus that is human papilloma virus will be there so because of this human papilloma virus that is mainly leading to this cervical cancer and this uh, uh, this vaccine which is mainly mainly going to uh, develop antibodies against this human papilloma virus okay so this is the one important thing that you have to remember and next topic is regarding india brazil navies may collaborate soon so you can go through this article once and in this world page that is page number 13 here you can see nasa telescope dives deep into the universe so nasa which mainly revealed some images or images from this james webb space telescope it is one of the largest and most powerful orbitary observatory ever launched and the pictures which mainly designed to appear farther than the before and as well as great clarity so actually it mainly sends some images here so because of this this is a news and here in this business page it is page number 14 you can see there are some important articles regarding this iip that is index of industrial production so here industrial output which mainly jumps 19.6 percentage and here in this article our nirmala sitaram ma'am she is saying that so there is a no there is a no proper uh, impact or we can see there's a poor impact of this inflation that is mainly seen so these are the two important articles that you need to refer so these are some articles that appear in the today's hindu newspaper and this is the comprehensive current affairs analysis from this rathor's is so i hope you understand this lecture Please subscribe to Rathor's IS Academy and don't forget to like, share and comment my videos and don't forget to enroll to the courses that we are offering in our Rathor's IS Academy. So by this I am concluding. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Thank you so much.